Welcome everyone to the Town of Brookfield Select Board meeting Thursday, May 30th, 7 p.m. Uh, there is no public comment at this meeting and uh, other than Jacob recording, anyone else recording? Lee Park uh, is recording. Anything else we need to say? It was an announcement. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm on to the announcements. Uh, oh dear. So to start off, uh, Today's meeting, we'll start with a moment of silence. Um, last weekend, I believe it was, or two weeks ago now, Ken Cleveland, uh, who has been a volunteer in this town for many years, uh, passed away. So we'll have a moment of silence. As a reminder, the annual town meeting will be held next week, Thursday, June 6th at 6.30 p.m. in the cafeteria at the elementary school. Entrance is in the back of the elementary school. Uh, signed warrants. Uh, before we go to that, yeah. should we do the pledge? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, that's over here. Yep, and then we move the flag. <laughs> Pledge of allegiance Pledge of to, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'm at a disadvantage because I'm not in the habit yet of going by to review the warrants, but you reviewed them and signed them? Yeah, okay. so should I read them or what yeah, is the... Since, since you're the one that reviewed and signed them, it okay. would be appropriate for to have you read them. All right. Um, if you want me to start doing it, I just need somebody to tell me the which week which weeks I need to be in. Is it supposed to be for the vice chair to do or something? It's not really <laughs> set for anyone. It's basically whoever volunteers to do it. So do you want to do it? Or? I, 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 <laughs> I can if needed. So I just need to know that I'm the one doing it. That's all. So if you would prefer that I do it, I can do it. You, so. can, you can do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> was this week so it's every two weeks correct yep okay let the record show i don't know about enthusiastically but i understand that the chair so here's the thing i have a certain level of empathy for being the chair so given my level of empathy for being the chair if you would like to offload <laughs> the review of the warrants i am willing to throw myself on the warrant grenade let's put it that way so uh so fy 24 21A, withholding $37,849.24. FY2423, withholding $31,829.23. FY2424, withholding $86,144.02. FY2424, payroll $200,253.71. FY2424, accounts payable. $184,545.44. FY2424A withholding uh, $4,375.44. Any? A point of order, Mr. Chair. Sure. And maybe it's not even a point of order, so I might be using the wrong term. But one thing, we had discussed the last meeting, or it might have been the meeting prior to that, that we need to be more cautious about our use of uh, acronyms in the agenda. So I, yeah, do, I, wanna saw just, that. I do wanna just point I out that, yeah. that, you know, please note, like I wanna publicly remind everybody who's responsible for agendas to please ensure that we have all acronyms written out, even ones that even seem okay. intuitively obvious for the casual observer. So, cause honestly, I know that WTH is withholding not everybody does. I know that AP is accounts payable. Not everybody does. Let's um, make sure that we are writing for the lowest common denominator. Um, the HCA is back in. There. Well, that's well. <laughs> to be 
in the interest of full disclosure, that's the one that I noticed, and then I went back and said, gee, we have an awful lot of acronyms on this. So, um, so we'll start off with ARPA allocations. I don't know if you want to join us. Does it, I just kind of wanted to get a rundown of where we were with ARPA. It looks like we're at 80,000, 60,000. Eighty-four thousand. Yeah. Oh, and six sixty thousand is uh, just allocated but unspent. Unspent, but right? Eighty-four thousand left to yeah. allocate. I know we had talked about it at the last meeting where we kind of were. So. So. I think a large chunk of it may or may not be used for the police station depending on the timing because I think Lori says this needs to be expended by the end of the year. It has to be allocated, allocated by the allocated. end of the year. Yeah, but then once, but once we hit the end of the year, if we have misallocated and something doesn't spend out properly, then we're, we're stuck. We can't reallocate yeah. it. So, and did we take the end, so I can't remember, did we leave the, the police station on the warrant? On the, on the warrant, warrant. warrant for 80,000 in free cash, and we Good. took it off the ARP allocation, right. which is how we ended up back at the 84. That, right, back at the 84, okay. So right now you only have 18,740 for the police station, and that was just to cover the engineer. Right, okay. So that puts us in the position to, to have we, where are we at in getting the engineer, getting the engineer work done? Is that done? I literally just saw something on that. If it is, I haven't seen No, it. I think Lindsay just emailed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lindsay did follow up with them. follow up with them to see where we were. Okay, great. Okay. Is that good, or do you want me to find it? No, it's good. Okay. No, it's good. All right, so that leaves us in a good position, though. That It's likely that we'd be able to cover the police station okay. with the balance of it. Okay. The only question I have is, so we had 100,000 designated towards the town hall ballroom. It looks like 57,000 was spent yep. and 42,000 is unallocated. It's just remaining. I right. don't know what else you had that needed to be finished up there. Or maybe the windows. <laughs> so the windows would be a great step. Right. Yeah, I was going to say. No, it was like five thousand right. or something. So I don't know where we came up with the original hundred thousand dollar estimate, or if it was just kind of. A it was a hundred thousand, if I remember right, because Kelly thought it was going to be like eighty or ninety to paint, because she had a couple quotes for eighty or ninety to paint, and it ended up only. The fifty-seven. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's up to you if you want to. You can rescind the balance of the forty-two thousand and put it back into the unallocated. Let's well. Let's get. I think I'd like to leave it there and get some well, well, on the storm windows. That's what I was going to say, actually. So I would I would be aligned with that. Let's see if is that something we could probably. We want to refer that to the town hall improvement committee or or to. I wouldn't all. mind taking that up. Okay. And then I would meet with the town hall improvement committee and what I find as well. Yeah. Is that forty two thousand? Well, so we don't even know what those would, so if we send out an RFP, do we need to send out an RFP or do we would have to know it was over a certain amount before we have to send out an RFP? You only have to, you have to assume it's gonna be over 50,000 if you're gonna send out an RFP. You can do a standard email quote if you think it's gonna be over 10. Okay, so we could get away probably with an email I quote so. because I, I don't think it would be necessarily over 50,000 for those windows for storms. Yes or no. Yeah. So. All right. yeah, so, so I'd leave it. Yeah, I'd leave it there and try to finish the work, or expand the scope of the work and finish the money. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else that we need to cover on that? No. Do you have anything else? We're good with it. Thanks for the clarity, Lori. 
longevity payments. So what do we do? <laughs> you're going to have to, you're going to have to request, I would assume a reserve fund transfer from the finance committee or the advisory board um, to cover the deficit for this year. Um, the issue is if this is, I was saying that there is a citizen petition for this coming ATM, um, the town can't afford to do this every year because this number is going to grow significantly every single year. So we're going to drop off by three payments um, of $1,500 because they're retirees and this was a one-time thing for them. But the employees that are sitting at 18 years um, are going to jump up to 20 well, years. Yeah, one of the things that we're going to at least propose on the town hall floor um, and I don't mind being very transparent about this, is we're gonna be writing up a, a, a recommended amendment where um, the longevity for this year would be scaled based on part-time versus full-time status, based off of what percentage of a full-time employee that the person served in the, in the prior year. So if, if somebody functionally was half-time, then they would get half of whatever the stipend is for the period of time that they've served. So that there's some sort of... So this is only full-time employees, okay. with the exception of the agreement to pay everybody at the fire Oh, okay. EMS, yeah. Which was agreed on at the town meeting. But the town employees um, within town hall, they are all full-time or part-time benefited employees. Right, but, but the part-time benefited, say they work on average 24 hours a week, mm -hmm. which qualifies them for benefits. The, the proposal that we were going to put on the floor was that then they would get 60% of the longevity if what they work is 24 hours a week. Right. So not, not for this last year, not yeah. for 24, but for 25. So we actually only have two people on the town list that would that, that, that would impact? That and one person isn't even qualifying for longevity because they haven't been here long enough. So okay. it would impact one person. So, okay, so it would no financial impact. Okay, okay. so it wouldn't help. No. Well, wouldn't that, wouldn't that also, though, apply for the fire? All of the fire. It would, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That would be a fairly significant yes. impact because they would all be, I mean, we could probably, for the sake of um, not looking like we're, we're not considerate of the contribution that public safety has, we could probably put a floor of 50% on the part-timers, but it would cut in half what would go for fire EMS. Yeah, fire alone was 23 550. Right, so that would put us at like 12 for that relative right. instead of the 23 and still recognize the fact that the folks have served with us that long, but not necessarily as, as full-time employees. And I think that's 
I don't think that's an unfair stance to take. So you cut these in half? Yeah, so those would be cut in half next year. If if it passes on the town hall right. floor, this is I would public. recommend one third. I wouldn't even recommend <coughs> half to the fire department based on the amount of hours on a weekly basis that put in. True. On on one level, on the other level is it's significant when they add. That. I yeah, I mean, that. I mean, that's the thing is yeah. that yeah. you know we 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 do want to incentivize <coughs> volunteerism is hard. We've so far managed to keep. You know, mm -hmm. a largely volunteer force. We've so far managed to keep one of the healthiest volunteer EMSs. I don't know that I want to bind them out to the kid that grind the corn in terms of uh, the well, folks I'm, providing I'm, those services. I'm just concerned about what the town can afford more than. Yeah, is this okay. going to be brought up, or is this? So this is. This, is, this has to be paid this year because it was agreed. Yeah. All yeah. oh, right. Yeah. Last right. Year. It's yeah. just a matter of we have to come up with the deficit. So and that that needs to be done. Is on the town meeting for this year. I personally don't. I would never support longevity. Not in a town like this. When you look at your numbers. You don't have a longevity problem. Yeah, longevity well. is for a town that has massive turnover, constant turnover. Yeah, I do understand that. I also don't want to swing us too far in a pendulum of not recognizing the fact that we don't have a longevity problem. Right. If that makes any sense. So, I get it. I mean, the only other thing I would suggest is if you're going to go ahead with agreeing with the longevity, I would, I would lower the amounts that you're paying out or, you know, heighten the years. Um, just because, I mean, realistically, when you looked at the budget this year, the town can't afford to go $40,000 right. plus every single year. And I'm, I'm absolutely not disputing that. I'm just saying that we can only control so much where that was done as a citizen's petition, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the ways to mitigate it is to come with a, a counter proposal against that warrant article that we think has the best chance of getting the support of the town. I would be concerned if we went much lower than half that there would be um, a more concentrated effort to get the vote out to support it in its so how do we fundamentally, how do we do this? We let it go to the floor to vote upon and then address that? Well, or well we have to. Citizens' are petitions are going to be there. We, we, we already have right, it on the right. board. Yeah. So the only thing we can do is propose an amendment to the citizens' so petition. So we can't do anything okay. this year. This is right. No, I know this is, yeah. yeah. So going forward, right. this is what we're, we need to iron out. But I'm just wondering how to address it at the town meeting when we go well, through the I citizens. The financial impact that, yeah. that it's having, I think, is probably the so most we'll important. Amend and amend the uh, well, citizens. we can amend it whether it'll pass amended or not is right. a totally different question, right? But I think that that we need to have that discussion, okay? Right? Um, and I think it will be a good, I, I like I said, I mean, Rich, I, I hear what you're saying about a third, but I mean, so this last year was the first time it even came up, right? Correct. And some of the firefighters have been on there, I'm gonna make a guess, 35 years. Right? So they're not. Yeah. yeah, so I see a 38 years, I see 32, 39 30. years, like 43 years. These people are there because they want to be there and they're, they're giving back to the community. I don't think it's because of the money they're getting out of it. But, and I don't begrudge them the money in any way, shape, or form. Like, like you were stating, that when they are there and it's a structured buyer, it's dangerous. It's, can be, all right? yep. so, and, and I commend them for that, but that's what they love to do, right? And, I, and that's why they're there. That's why they're there for, I don't know who it is, at 43, Steve Budnick. I mean, that, that's unbelievable to me. 47 years, Herb Chafin. I mean, that's, that's great, but if we can't afford it, it puts us into a override position, or, right? Like, yeah, but we're not in an override position right now. Not yet. Nope. So we have to agree what the policy will be. Well, we have to agree what the policy will be, and I think we want to make sure. And then it to the town hall floor, and if they have the vote to be it, they, that's the town's decision. Correct. So we just need to figure out what our functional counter will be on the floor this year. And and remember, what we counter on the floor this year does not necessarily. It's not set in goal. Is not, right. Yeah, it's not necessarily set 
in stone for that's the way it's going to be going forward, though it should be somewhat aligned with what we expect the policy mm -hmm. to be. So. All right, we're good. So yeah. I'll send uh, reserve fund transfer to the yep. treasury. Oh, you'll, you'll take care of it? Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. take care of it. And I'll take it off my to-do list. <laughs> that, that, we're, that we're supporting it, yeah. <laughs> it's at our request, yeah. Do you, do you need a motion for that or no, since it's, okay. Uh, Rescind the stipend policy. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I think it's pretty clear. We just rescind it. Yeah. Now, what will we go? Back We're going to? back to paying people the stipend on a. I was paying monthly. Before, monthly. Yeah. And it was working out fine. Okay. I just prefer to go back to that to avoid the conflicts that are going on now. That would be great. <laughs> All right. I'll make a motion that we rescind the vote of was it relative to stipend policy and return to the monthly uh, payment. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just from a information standpoint, does that mean that at what point are you are you going to still pay this year at I'm the end of the year? This year, the way it has been, there's only one month left. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, I owe Tom. Complicated. Yes, yeah. to pay it at the end of the year rather than paying it monthly. So if you paid monthly when someone left the board, they were done and they were paid. Yeah. Now that I'm paying yearly, I have to go back and calculate, well, when did this person leave? And yeah. Would, would it be easier for you to do it in June for all of the retro and then that's start in July? Do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So start in July 1st, I'll go to the monthly, and I'm just going to finish on the next one when I pay the longevity. Uh, discuss the water drainage issue at Old Rice Corner Road. I went up there yeah. after our meeting. They regraded the road. They did everything I recommended. And they're at like 95% catching the water. And the, the woman, Olivia, on the bottom of the middle home that was built. At the yeah, end we got some road. rain. Did yeah, and we did have a couple of good rain events. And I talked to... Uh, I went up there, I witnessed what he did. It's exactly what I recommended, and it's working really well. I talked to him today. He said he hadn't been there after today's rain, but he suspected it was going to be okay. Did you happen to go there today? I did. And what did you see? Any good? We could do a little bit of maintenance on the town and stuff that road. I'd like to see us do that just because of the way that we've got that erosion up. It, it, hasn't been main, it hasn't been maintained in years because there was no dwellings there. Yep. So for us to do a little bit of maintenance on it and just help divert that water that little bit more, I saw no issues on my um, corner of well, crossroad, whatever, whatever it is. Um, but there was no drainage issues coming down that bank. So when you're talking about doing some maintenance to the, the short little section where there was asphalt grindings and they were packed in really well, what would you do? Are you going to add asphalt grindings or are you going to pave it? As, add asphalt grindings. So if you do, I'd recommend that you wait till July till it yes. gets real hot and let them heat up. And, and actually where the pavement ends, there is a couple of small trenches there mm -hmm. as well. I mean, there's no way, but yes, wait till But it'd be a very minimal amount that right. it would take it'd to... Be maybe yeah. a 10 -wheel it heats up, you'll pack in well. Yeah. If you did it ahead of time, you'd wash on a day like today. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're still on the agenda. I don't know. Do you want to come up? Because sure. I know we had talked about kind of short-term goals and objectives. Ooh. You know, I think we were talking about a 90-day update, but 
we want to prepare you for that <laughs> and not just <laughs> throw, me, throw me to the wolves? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, the only thing that I have about short term, because I had talked to Ron about it earlier, and I don't know, did Ron talk to you about the uh, beaver issue? No. Okay. Um, so the beaver issue. So the water's coming back down now, Miss right. Lytle's driveway. Um, I actually just Where you guys were pulling it? It's actually, the water's empty there now. Right. Because <laughs> the beaver dam in the back is now. <laughs> I, I just read the complete email chain from the start today. I just got it. Yeah. And it's, it's a very confusing thing because technically Mass Wildlife should be in there opening that up, not us. It's their property. Right. So, and they, they were basically saying that we could pay to have a trapper go in there and trap. I don't know why we... Why should we pay to have the beavers trapped when it's Mass Wildlife property? That's my issue. Well, Monday, um, so Donnie Berthiem's office and Peter Durant's office is going to be here. And I plan on talking to them about okay. this. I mean, that, that's my issue with that. Yes, they, they gave us permission to yeah. go in there and open up that beaver dam. Yeah. But they are the specialists. That's a lot of water behind that dam. Yeah. You pull one stick the wrong way. And we're, well, we're you know, going to wipe out Westbrook Field Road. Right. <laughs> Well, and, and so that culvert is another that's issue. A, that's a whole other issue but yes um, that does need to get replaced yeah uh, which will happen we'll get that on the agenda to make that happen which one are you talking about the one at the old rest area is that no, no, no 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 okay. up up my street up no. foster hill so the dam you just said that if it was breached it would wipe out westbrook field road wasn't that the one they breached last year and it all came down and flooded out the old rest area. So that's what used to happen because right. they started doing it so it went down to Willowbrook. Right. Where it needs to go is in between me and my neighbor because it okay. doesn't affect anyone when it, I mean, that was the natural path of the water. It, it, it's a concern. Yeah. You know, um, and where Mike, uh, I forget his last name. Morello. He said that he was going to keep up on it and he obviously hasn't. He uh, emailed me probably directly. Um, I, I just have an issue getting involved with I totally technically you, state land because if we do one thing wrong, they're going to come back. They're well, going to come back. that dam incorrectly and right. cause an issue. And we bought it. We right. broke it. We buy it. He said he hasn't been out there in a couple of weeks. I want to make sure I can get the current infrastructure functioning before adding any extensions. So what he's meaning is that flow device. Right. He wants to get that functioning before he gets the extensions. Mm -hmm. um, but there, they currently don't have any extensions. <laughs> right. Uh, but well, as far as this, the state land, I would rather leave that up to Mass Wildlife. I mean, technically, and they keep pushing it off to us. If, if they push it off to us and we go in there and start breaching that dam, number one, we have to get a permit right. from Board of Health and we have to get permission from CONCOM. But also, at that point, we could be accepting responsibility for it. Right. And I want to keep that responsibility on them. Mm -hmm. So. And the, the, it, the amount that it's up, there's these wood duck uh, nesting sites and the water level is supposed to be about a foot below that and the water is right up to it. Yeah. And at and one so point all I, this flooding is coming into jeans and now it's all flooded to, behind the bus garage as well. At, at one point during the chain email, it stated that we, if we were to open it up, we could not lower the water to a level where the ducks could not nest. I'm not a duck expert. <laughs> So <laughs> it, it's one of those, let's tread very lightly here and try to keep this pushed back on the state to get their end done, where we're trying to keep our end done by you know, keeping mm -hmm. the water going under the road gracefully versus losing the road. Mr. So, Chair, if I might. Yeah. I know in the email chain that, that came up this morning, uh, Fish and Wildlife is indicating that 
they don't have the responsibility. I'm not so sure I buy that. Is it, yeah, worth, I, is it worth asking town council to clarify the responsibility in this situation? Well, well you said that the Berthiums rep is here Monday, right? Right. So I think we probably start with them. Because they're then, cheaper. And then pay town council. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we may wind up having to go there. There's no doubt about it. But it may be if we get the rep to call them. I mean, it, the Beaver Dam is on a Maslow Wildlife Sanctuary. So it's not town property. Right. It, my concern is exactly what Pete had indicated. We touch it, something goes wrong, and there's damage. The town will now be yeah. liable because Fish and Game is going to say, oh, "You didn't touch it." You yep. guys did. If we if we touch it, we own it. Yes. That that's why I'm trying to stay away from that beaver dam. And they kind of were pushing off too because they said until the culvert gets fixed, they don't really want to send the water down. Yes. But I, I guess the follow up to that would be. When do you think we could get the culvert upgraded? I'll take the measurements and uh, see which. I, we're, not, we're not even sure what diameter pipe is in there because it stops on the edges of the road. And then there's big head walls built, which are more like tunnels. They're not actually extending the pipe. They're just three sided, you know. When the road was extended, the pipe stayed the same length. Right. <laughs> so. Um, We'll have to pull one of those apart, see what pipe size pipe is in there. I'm sure it's galvanized, I'm sure it's collapsing. Um, and at that point, um, put a larger pipe in. And that road can be, especially with, with those corners and the hills right there, that could be a nightmare to work on where we probably have to shut that road down for a day. Everything. It's a, it's a cut through road. So and if it, something it can happens. easily be shut yeah. down. Yeah. Easily. Right. Just hope easily shut down, down, but it's still, <laughs> you know, um, you know, it, it just adds to the cost and everything. But um, but we can, you know, we'll definitely have to find out what size pipe is under the ground first, and then add to that, or put twin pipes under. So it sounds like the. The action plan is on Monday. We're going to bring our representatives out here. I guess we can clarify responsibility and who can do what. Mm -hmm. If what time do they come, Karen? Is that like ten o'clock? Is there another way around that road? Because I, I don't know where that road comes out on the other end. So It just runs parallel with Route 9 into West Brookfield. So oh, okay. 11.30 for 12.30 on Monday. So 11.30. So if you want to join. Mm -hmm. So 11.30. Right. And then it sounds like the, the board's preference is if we're still getting no joy from, from the state, then we pursue, I guess, the legal opinion from town council to see as far as responsibilities go? I, I don't know that I'm ready to to waste more money on town council as far as that goes. I'd like to continue to talk to the state with our state rep. With the well, state and, and just so you know, we've gone this route with both representatives and the state. Before. And they I mean, pushed it down. It's my opinion that our town council isn't going to motivate by even if we send a nasty letter from town council, it's not going to motivate the, mm -hmm. the state agency to to come out and do anything. So we're just throwing money away at that point. I mean, so in other words, even if we're yeah. quote unquote Not correct in our interpretation yeah. of who's responsible, mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be done. Correct. Well, and it sounds like they don't have a lot of resources. So even if you threaten them, right. they, they have, have a lot of resources. I mean, they they with the site meet, they, they actually that. admitted that it was theirs, but giving us permission to take care of the problem. They had the resources to rehab the, all of Long Hill Road, 1,000 acre parcel. And they have a machine up there now to prepare for birds. Like, if they can do that, they can go up there and take down the beaver dam to the elevation and put a device in that will maintain the level. Mm -hmm. It's just us being loud enough to get them to do it, I think. Collectively with our state rep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Sounds like a plan. So 
so long. So that's all I had in short term. Just yeah. that's it. As of right now, yeah. <laughs> so I got a couple things. One is one making sure we don't use that backhoe anymore without the pin being in it, so that the it doesn't worsen right anymore. Uh, fluid filming all the equipment that's in the snow, making sure that gets done as a priority. That got ordered pin. today. Okay. And then the simple mowing, right? The mowing in the roadsides we talked about. That's starting Getting the bamboo, the bamboo's out of control in yeah. some roads. Uh, and out that there. was already on the agenda for Monday. And then potholes, mm -hmm. right? Maintaining those and just, just simple maintenance for yep. now, right? Yep. We don't have any big projects. So nope. just, I, I had already you planned a lot on. Of help, let's get the maintenance done. I had already. It hasn't been done in quite some time. Yes, I had already planned on the roadside mower going out Monday. We do have an oper a licensed operator now. Uh, he did spend some time getting familiar with the equipment. Um, myself and one of the new hires spent all day yesterday out in back of the garage getting rid of all the trash and debris, etc. cetera, um, getting everything organized and neatened up so you can actually find stuff and function, um, which was a priority for me because when you're up there and you're trying to get to a an attachment and you can't get to it without moving 10 other things it just it made sense and uh what's the scrap policy did you take any scrap in or anything i, I did not we did okay. make a separate pile in a separate area um, to neaten up the backyard so now that's in a corner and okay. we can add to it and so to, you know, to answer your there. problem question around scrap policy I believe, and I'd, I'd have to get double checked on this, it falls under the same, functionally it falls under the same rules as anything that we consider excess that we're planning to dispose of. So functionally speaking, now with scrap, I think we probably have a couple of different options. Like if it was actual physical equipment mm -hmm. that's excess, then we then we have to dispose of it. Typically, it's a municipal bid, something, something that that's appropriate. I think if we if it's brought to us and it's clear that it's truly just scrap metal status, I think then it would just be incumbent on getting with somebody like Scrap It or, or right. whomever and get market value for. Right. The material. Th right. This is so basic and scrap documented in a plow. Scraps turned in as miscellaneous revenue. Yeah. If they had it, just old right. pipe, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. this is pipe break drums. Uh, so I, I was at the Board of Health meeting last week, and they're in the process of getting a dumpster at the landfill that they'll be compensated for the scrap. I would be in favor of the highway department using that yeah. same dumpster. It all comes back to the general fund eventually. Right. The only thing I would say is if they have any materials that might specifically get a higher rate if we, we brought it the to the recycler. I, I did meet with the gentleman that's going to be doing or potentially be doing the uh, transfer station uh, from Scrap It. And he would pay us a higher rate for the scrap at the highway garage. Because it's a higher quality. It's a higher quality. It's a lot more weight. Yep. Okay. So um, My concern is you don't generate enough of it. Right. To, right, to warrant it, then you're going to create a separate pile. You're going to wait. You're going to have them. We come. we wouldn't. Yes, we're going to have a separate pile, which is completely tucked off in the corner, out of the way, and he could come at his convenience and take it, um, yeah. and and pay us. So, so. Uh, so. At least now it's not when you. I don't know if you remember, Rich, but when you went up the, the road and you went to take a left, it was all piled up on the corner there. Some is scrap in there, some is not. Some is re rod It needs to be separated right. and determine what scrap and right. what's usable. There's a ton of rebar there. Um, I'm assuming it's left over from the bridge. Um, that I'm not sure of, but that is still there. Um, but all the broken manhole covers and catch basin frames, stuff like that, that's all been moved. So now when you, when, you know, if a resident pulled in there, it looks clean and you can actually, you know, Function. function. They hear what Maureen has to say about the scrap. Yeah. When, when yeah. um, well, you said a higher rate, but I don't know what that is. But one thing to consider is that we, if we track the tonnage that we recycle, we get more money on our grant. We get so more money on our the grant. Our recycling grant. Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that might that that might change what yeah, makes so more sense financially for the town. Then. Yeah. Okay. It may be better to get more points. 
Do you have information on how that grant's calculated so that we know what the impact is? I'll, I'll, we're in the process of doing for the year, so I'll, I'll, I'll get that. And Perfect. Thank you. Um, there, there was some things that I forgot. Um, and it was more of just a discussion. So grass cutting. How many seasonal workers are doing grass cutting versus your crew? Right now, one. Okay. And actually, uh, this coming week will be his last week until uh, end of this one. So I don't have a solution for it, but I would just wanted to bring this up. So now that we're in grass cutting season, we have skilled higher wage employees taking two days a week cutting grass on a four day work week. I'm not a big fan of skilled workers doing unskilled work. <laughs> well, we have two okay. people cutting grass. One is a part time. Yeah. Season. Um, and then we have one of the rest of us mm -hmm. out with out with him cutting grass two days a week. Um, so is it all hands on deck with the grass cutting two days a week? No. Okay. No, only only two. Okay. Um, we did do an all hands on deck before Memorial Day, just because of all the weed whacking involved. So yeah. um, that was all hands on deck. But aside from that, it's two people um, and then I guess the other thing I was thinking of and I, I I'm just trying to figure out why it stopped and it was probably just a lack of volunteerism the rec fields I mean you guys cut all the rec fields mm -hmm. and prior it was the rec department I believe mm -hmm. did do it they actually had a part-time worker yeah. for right. a period of time and had budget for a part-time worker yeah. So if it would alleviate taking one of your guys off and have that revisited, because I'd rather pay someone eighteen dollars an hour to be cutting grass than mm -hmm. someone twenty five dollars an hour to cut grass. Right. I think the problem we have is now we have four full time employees. We've never had that before. Right. They don't do tree work anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't oil and sand the roads anymore. There's so many less projects that they do. We don't have any big projects going. What are we going to have four guys do down here all week sitting around? Well, well before, they, before you, you make that statement, before, you, the, uh, so before uh, you make that statement, I'd actually, that's part of what we're talking about here tonight, Rich. In, and I'd say, I hate to put it this way, there's more than enough real road work out there in this town that even without a quote unquote big project between and, and does our actual, does our, does our hot, the hot box, is box actually function? Yep. I had it out they the other day. We did two ton of hot top. Okay. So, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of work that could be getting actually done on the roads that we have not done for the last few years. So I know you all have brought like your own, like, hey, these are the things I want to see. I'd like to hear from you. I know it's only been like not even 30 days or roughly 30 days, right? But... Master your own fate, what you've seen so far, what you've driven of the road so far. I'd like to hear what you think for the next 90 days, especially where, and granted we are fully staffed, but two of those individuals have like limited equipment time. They've right. got all their licenses from what I understand because I've spent some yes. time talking to the crew. And that's um, I'd like to hear from your perspective, short term, mm -hmm. what's your goals for the the team. I mean, now that everything's starting to grow and through my going around town and whatnot, I can, I'm able to identify all the roads like Town Farm Road that need to be, you know, the bamboo is out of control. There's certain spots on 148 that are um, growing rapidly. Intersections need to be cut back. Um, so it's pretty much prioritizing the roads that need to get mowed right now. Um, and that equipment operator, even though he's licensed, he is new to the machine. I don't want to see him try to go 100 miles an hour and damage a telephone pole, grab a guy wire, or, or you know, damage the equipment in any way. So he's going to have, he, he, he did spend some hours out back in the garage getting used with, to the controls, and he's somewhat comfortable with them, but when you're on a road, it's a whole different world. 
uh, naturally you have traffic flying around you, et cetera. So he needs to take his time and get used to the machine and pay attention to what he's doing. So that the roadside mowing is going to take longer than previous years. I will let you know that well, right Well, you're not familiar with areas, because like I brought up, I mean, on my road, there's a rock. And right. even Donnie, that, that did it for years, sometimes hit forgot the, about hit it. the rock, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. And, <laughs> and that, that happens, and you know, um, that's where you need to be paying attention, be a little fast with the controls to get the boom up. Yeah. Um, there's always always cold patching to do there's holes everywhere in town um, the other day we were out doing some hot top work and we used up all of the leftovers in potholes a lot of it was on gay road but we also did lake road um, some ones on weber um, now the school is calling they seem to think that we own the access road off of weber road and they're calling about potholes on there. We're still looking into that because I don't believe that we own that road. Um, so kind of the same scenario as the Beaver thing. I don't want to go in there and start patching potholes and then own it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, oh, you're saying the one going into the rear entrance. Yeah, the rear entrance. The rear entrance. Yeah, the rear entrance. Well, mm. A good part of that is on the Brookfield. You get all the way down to the tennis courts where the town line yeah, actually. But is that our responsibility? Yeah. I mean, I know it's maybe. our land, but well, so we're exactly still a long I'm driveway. Say probably <laughs> not, because <laughs> if you're down there, the police kick you out. That you don't have the right to access, right? Yeah. So it's it's open, but it's private. So if it's private, invitees yeah. are not welcome after hours. Well, then they own. So it, we're still but looking. I think it's going to be passing. The, I, well, and I think I think, and here's one of those things, and 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 but, this is so so. Let me just finish my yeah, thought, okay? Let me just finish my thought. Is that we have a reasonably decent partnership on certain things with the school, mm -hmm. right? So if we don't do the work, maybe we're lucky and we only pay for a, 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 a fifth of what they're gonna <laughs> pay somebody else to do it, yep. but it may wind up cheaper, better, smarter for us to actually do the work because otherwise the chargebacks may be more than if they do, right? <laughs> right? I mean, I, so, so I, I, I get it. The reality of it is one ton of asphalt down there would do wonders at a hundred bucks. Right? Uh, yes, so, yes. Uh, okay, no you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny, no. but if, no, we, if, we have the yeah. if we have the staffing, it may be, it may right. be more advantageous for us to just but it's play nice two in the hours and a ton of whether you right. asphalt so, or cold patch, I think you it's know, more just, just to make a point, there, I, I wouldn't do it just to make there, a point. There is one section that could just use a, a, a you know, quick layover with, uh, with hot top, and at that point we could pa patch in the holes with hot top as well. Yeah, so um, I, my, my thought is let's talk to so, them, let's find out what they're looking for, let's find out if it makes sense for us to do it. Right. If it's something we would typically outsource, fine, we push it back on them. If it's something no, I, we think I, we can handle. When I went through that today, it was nothing worth outsourcing. Um, it, uh -huh. It's definitely something we could handle in-house. Um, so, so I'll have a discussion with them about that. And, um, but let's let's just make sure that the business office, we also remind the business office that, yes, we took care of it. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, right? No problem. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, you know, right now we're chasing a lot of washouts on the road edges around town. Um, so that's either, you know, one inch minor stone or millings at this point, because um, there's not a lot of drainage in town. So, uh, you know, a lot of the road de road edges, some of them drop down that much. So we're trying to keep up with those as well. Where is that? Everywhere. You can drive on almost any road in town. And they'll Have be you open. started any of that? Yes. Yet? Which roads did you do? Um, we did Rice Corner Road. We've done some on Weber. I still got to revisit that corner on Quaybog again because that keeps disappearing. Um, oh, and I did contract contact um, a company about the Mass DOT approved concrete patch for the bridge on Quaybog. I should be meeting with him hopefully this week. Um, We've been all over town sporadically filling in um, washouts as we find them. 
Yeah, so that's the one thing I talked about. The Claybog Street Bridge is coming yes. up pretty rapidly. Yes. Well, yeah, I, I looked into the Mass DOT approved bridge deck concrete patch. Are you talking about the new bridge? It's not new. It was kind of. It's done in the it was, 85. Well, yeah. it's it's not so much new as I think you're thinking of the section right that got redone. Right near uh, the restaurant. Over there. Yeah. So, yeah, right, so right the, the clay so box. Clay box. Oh, that, oh, yeah. that, for, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to just throw anything in there. No, that makes sense. So, uh, let's do it once. Right, do it once. I know, um, Mike had said that he put some coal patch in there a few times and it just didn't hold up. So, yeah. I'd rather get the right product, um, that Mass DOT uses basically. And I'm actually going to reach out to them and see if they have any on hand. If they have it on hand, and could help us out with that, that would be great. Yeah. So, uh, naturally, it's a nasty corner, nasty bridge to work mm -hmm. on, so that will involve a police detail, which it, that has not been a problem. So, uh, so it, we're gonna get that rolling as soon as possible so we don't lose that whole bridge deck. And I, I don't think we have to go into it in depth, but I mean, thinking of other major projects, I mean, Gay Road is a major, Gay Road is a major, not only project, but headache. Um, I'm sure you've heard about the new cost estimate. Yeah. Uh, that's not the pretty. 1.6. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. But that's also. That was. Including where, water and. That was all new drainage, everything. Um, one option, and I know um, Lindsay is uh, submitting for a grant, um, so we'll see how that goes. But one option is to replace the two existing culvert pipes um, to get those upgraded, reclaim, and pave. It would be a lot, lot cheaper. But I don't know how that would work with the grant. So. So. I think there's a, a couple of opportunities there. So first of all, the, I hate to say it, for the particular federal grant that I think that she's going after, if I remember correctly, we've had a lot more success with those when one, the bigger the project is, the better, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then, and do you know what the deadline is on that? The 5th of next month. 5th of next, so it's next 5th week. of June. Next okay, week. Next week. So it's it's really key to call out that it's a like a major alternate commuter route, mm -hmm. and that it's also like kind of from a standpoint of if we if we had some sort of major incident like where the school was on 148, pointing out that from like a public safety it's like a bypass to get okay. between communities. I, yeah. I know she had reached out to the police chief to ask him about any accidents or you know um, damage to vehicles yeah stuff like that yeah um, yeah so all, all of that helps like lend right. support but if it's not approved for the larger money we could look at sections of it like the culvert replacement there's smaller grants out there where we could apply for the grants for the, right. the culvert replacement and then basically like do take like kind of what you're talking about a somewhat phased approach or a different approach right. but also potentially get some of it with supplemental funds for individual chunks of that mm -hmm. it's just more complicated to manage right and it would be better if we could do like all the water management and the catch basins and all right. everything but we can at least enhance what we've got right i mean even to reclaim it grade it correctly with a crown so the water gets off of the road yeah would be great yep um obviously um even if all the drainage was done there's still only limited places where that water can go. can go. Yeah. So yep. um, we're, we're looking at all options at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, very minor thing to add to the to-do list, and I get it will probably never happen. So I'm Don't just going to put it out there. <laughs> okay. But there's one area where we made from an ADA perspective our local sidewalks even Rubber. worse <laughs> which is like right at the corner of Central and Common at the very end of Central Street when okay. we did the Central Street project we went from having a grade that had already been identified on our ADA plan as being non-compliant 
and we pitched it like this pretty much so and and there's it's also a potential ice death trap for anybody going down to that corner and a lot of people do actually walk the village even during the weather so um, if at some point if we're doing other work in the space well and this is my thing about with right. people cutting grass like let's get these people working on different like projects yeah. and stuff you know get someone, yeah. which we can do i mean I, the, the, the two new hires they're both young kids um, they're hard workers and now that i've had a few weeks to evaluate them and their performance and you know get to know them and what they know and what they don't, don't know um, we can start to dive into projects like that yeah and it might uh, be a good training wheel project you right, know, right fundamentally in, in so that, i mean there's they have some knowledge, mm -hmm. but not a lot of experience. Not a lot of experience. Yep. So, um, it, it's anything that we can do to help them along and teach them. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, they're both sponges. Yeah. You know, you tell them yep. something, you show them how to do something once, and they've got it. Yeah. So, it's, it's really, really good. That's very refreshing. So, and if we have to jackhammer out the concrete and, and regrade that, that's what we'll do. Thank you. Anything else? No, I'm good. Okay. You're good. All right. Thank Have you. a good evening. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Have a good evening. Apple Country Radio. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys so Karen printed these off. I don't know if you saw the emails. There's actually other edits. I didn't realize that there were more edits. I saw some of the earlier ones. Now this is actually, this here is what Sharon just sent about an hour ago. Right. And I have copies if anybody hasn't had the time to print them out. We did get them printed, thank you. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> um, do you want my quick response or? Sure. <laughs> my quick response is, now that we have a town administrator, can we just, Push this to him to get the last yard of this yes. done. <laughs> so I'll make a motion that we uh, designate uh, Ron as our representative for ironing out the balance of that con contract. So I just had a couple questions, but well, I'll second your motion. Okay. And there we go. And it's now okay. discussion. It's now discussion. So the policy came across, but I just had some questions on the policy, and I see the amounts, but yeah. If there were a fire, and I realize it's probably all low voltage that you deal with, is that accurate, Sharon? Yes. Low. So yes. the chances of anything is probably pretty slim to none. But the numbers on the policy are extremely low, in my opinion, based on if we ever lost the building to a fire. So that's where our uninsured or something would probably end up kicking in. Well, that's, that's my next question. What? What would, and you may know more about this, Ron, based on this or something, like where would we stand if something ever happened where you know, we're getting insurance as a town facility, and now we're subletting a portion, and we, if, if, God forbid, if we ever had a fire, what would, what would this policy with a million pretty much everywhere and then two million for different things, but I, what, what would our insurance do with this? Yeah, if there's, say, significant or complete loss of the building, I mean, obviously, the, the uh, Apple Country Radio's uh, insurance would be a claim filed against that, assuming that you know, we, we would then uh, take the proceeds from that, but then we'd also fall back onto our own property casualty. Um, there would be some, you know, either uninsured or something along those lines. Uh, we do actually have, uh, literally just this, this afternoon, I was talking to our new property casualty rep at Maya, and that's certainly a question I can bring up to see if he's comfortable with these amounts with the being sublet. Mm. Um, I think it's a great idea, and I don't have a problem with it. I like the music on the radio station, like, but I just want to make sure from the town's perspective. And, but it, and I also want to know that, are we allowed to sublet this, or does that, what does that do to our policy? Because I know our policy is about to do we have to do we have to declare that ahead of time? 
Uh, those are a couple of yes. questions I want to know and I would, have the answers to. I would hope. Maybe and, maybe, and maybe they're going to come back and say it's no problem whatsoever, but I just would like to know yeah. the answer. That's absolutely a fair question. Obviously, we have no other sublet uh, exactly. tenants, if you will. Right. Uh, so this is new. Whether it's, not con whether it's considered material or not, not for us to determine, that's going to be up to, to my opinion. Yeah. Okay. So. If I could point out two things. Number one, these were the numbers given to me on the original draft of the agreements. Right. Verbatim. The second thing is that I've already paid the premium for a year on this policy. So um, if there are going to be any changes, I'd like to know so I could get back to the insurance company. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can, all, you can always change your limits. even. Yeah, though and I don't limits. think there's going to be it, just it, for my maybe no. Yeah, because, I mean, it's like if I own a strip mall, I'm not going to behold you to insure my $10 million strip mall just because you're in a 1,000 square foot I section. I would hope that. <laughs> I, I just want to point out too, in case there are people in the room who don't know, the transmitter we have um, is for 300 watts, and the effective um, signal is 100 watts. So that is, it's not one of these gigantic. It's, it's, it's less than a space heater. Yes. So it's yeah, it's basically like less powerful than most space heaters. And that is that, and the um, the Sage NDEC, which is the um, emergency alert system, which is also the size of a bread box, um, are the two are the two um, items that I believe draw the most power continuously and w are running unattended. So. Yeah, I can just say, you do have to notify um, Maya that we have a subletter, because I have subletts in other town halls, and they have to. I'm have just to assuming I would have hoped have, Kelly would have done that, but I, have to notify we should check. <laughs> what the type of businesses of their insurance Awesome. We need one of those. It is really convenient. <laughs> I do have a rather chunky document from the insurance company outlining all of the things that are covered in detail. And I'd be happy to loan that to you, Ron, if you don't sure. mind. Yes, so you can take a look at it. And, and uh, when you talk to the, um, the insurance company for the town, you can use that as a comparison rather than just this one page. Sure. OK. Yeah. I'd rather have more information than I I feel the same way. <laughs> I'm also. All right. Good. So we've got a motion. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 aye. 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 <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and if yes. I can settle one thing right now, I agree with the, I've, I've reviewed the, um, the amendment to the um, antenna license, and I am in total agreement on that. So if you want, you can. Check that off. We don't have to discuss it. I do have some questions on the other document, but we can talk about that without taking up more of this board's time. Yeah, I, I think maybe as a path forward, we would need to touch base with our Maya rep or Mrs. Maya rep. Mm -hmm. uh, let them know about the subletting and take a look at the, the limits on your policy, see what his feedback is with regards to that, and then I can pass that along to you, and then we can try to iron out those, those last few. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Actually, I do have one question. Sure. The historical Commission, do they, have, do they have to approve or anything since this is a historical building? Is it Good question. Say? I thought it went through historical and uh, is it? in our, I mean, this was part of the Town Hall Improvement Committee's. Town Hall Improvement is, has approved both the antenna and the studio. They, they voted to allow and they it. Usually check do we it. have an active yeah, they, historical committee? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yes. And, 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 and the and town hall committee is really them. good at cross-talking <laughs> typically. Yeah. I've, never, I've never had to double check them, but if you wanted to check it, it's probably a good idea. It's just in my previous life, we were burned by uh, having all the eyes on and T's crossing the historical commission. And they left it all for us. So uh, ours is pretty collaborative so long as they don't think that we're making like massive permanent modifications. And even when we did have done some semi-permanent modifications yeah, to the town hall, the they've been pretty collaborative, I guess. Good to know. One, one less thing we right. Yeah, yeah we have the one kitchen more. used to be all in the back Yeah, there. that used to be all one, one room. Oh, okay. And, and the, it was a kitchen and it's been subdivided into two offices with the smaller, just 
service kitchen. So I have one more question. As far as the antenna, where will the antenna actually go? Will it go towards the rear, I'm assuming? Or where? Right now, I, I have a picture. Oh, is it not already up there? No, the antenna's oh. not already oh, okay. I wanted to make sure the contracts were settled yeah. before I did anything yeah. of a permanent nature. Give me a second to find it. There are two, I believe, antennas already on the clock. Oh, here it is in the back. There are two antennas on the clock tower already. One of them is semi-hidden, but there's one there, mm -hmm. and there's one on the other side. Okay. And my plan was, this is the side facing the roof, yes. to put it there. Oh, great. Yeah. Perfect. Can I just show this? Okay. No, I've seen it. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. it as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chair. And I'll bring this when I talk to Mr. Administrator. <laughs> get him caught up with all of the other documents. Chair, do you know what those antennas are up there for? What are we using them for? I believe, they're, um, I believe they're the fire department. Okay. I have been in contact with Peter Martell back and forth a lot about this. Okay. And he was the one. In fact, I talked to him about, he, he has who he calls his tech guy. Because my first question was, is this antenna, which is simply to send out a signal, going to interfere with the signal of those two? And he consulted his technical advisor, and the technical advisor gave me the name of the gadget that has to go on our antenna to prevent that. Okay. And it's a part that I think at most costs two hundred dollars. So, right. so that well, made it easy to be a good neighbor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Are we done? Yep. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Grant writer. Oh, I'm like, what happened? HCA. Oh, HCA. Oh, sorry. Next. HCA. So, I had thrown this on here because I just wanted to recap. Um, so, we charged only $7,500, and that's how it was supposed to be because he did them both at the same time or so, something? So, and this is where it gets a little bit hairy, right? It's supposed to be $7,500 for agreement, but yeah. we were the ones that functionally demanded that we divide it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we we're about to start on the retail one right and there's a boilerplate for the retail one so there's a, a a high likelihood if we execute appropriately it'll be well under and i think what we can do mm -hmm. at that point is and i i think we can do this by just functionally invoking the good neighbor clause under the existing HDAs is that provided we keep the legal costs under the 7,500 that any, that the overage from the 7,500 from the other one, because here's the way it would work. We could try to draw a firm line and say, mm -hmm. look, that was two agreements. We need 15,000 from you and we'll hand you six back within 90 days. Mm -hmm. That's basically what we would be doing. Right. But we're about to go into another round of negotiation and the retail, unlike the agricultural and the mm -hmm. manufacturing, there's a bunch of, there's four distinct pre-existing KP law templates for retail. So what we basically need to do is pick one of the templates, work to keep the negotiations aligned on where those templates are. Yeah. Okay. And the 1500 overage is what we won't return of the 7500 fee for the retail mm -hmm. HCA rather than trying to go through the kerfuffle of they had originally asked the application to have both of the functions on a single HCA it was actually the town decision to divide those two to not put necessarily mm -hmm. an onerous burden on the individual it makes more sense for us to go forward knowing that there's that $1,500 overage and that. And I'm hoping like on the next one, it should kind of like jet well, issue exactly. because we've it, heard. Ex exactly, <laughs> right? So he still has the 7,500 feet yeah. coming on the retail, but the way that our thing is written, we would return anything that's not spent of that with the legal fees back to the applicant anyway. Right. So I think there's an understanding that the 1500 overage is also going to get applied to that 7500 upfront fee and our our target right now is to keep the legal fees under let's say 6000 on yeah. the retail yeah. so that the 7500 will cover it and everybody comes out 
whole. Okay. That's the plan right now. All right. So, so. because I wasn't here for any of it, so right now we're at the 16, we received a check for 7,500 from Mr. Brown. Right. Mm -hmm. We've expended 6,000 of that. No, no we've expended 9,000. So our went expenses over. went over for okay. the agricultural and manufacturing HCAs because originally we we're going to do it as a single HCA. It wound up as two and there was some kerfuffle in the middle because of some of the language on the okay. initial one in order to do an amendment. So we did two HCAs and an amendment. Okay. okay. So r rather than then try it since we're the ones that divided the original application which was going to be a single hca for both agricultural and, and manufacturing. what would that be you it would have been 15 total <coughs> okay. okay so currently we're functionally 1500 dollars okay. behind okay. right but <laughs> rather than say hey hand us 7500 and we'll give you six thousand back and have the the cost of basically doing that right mm -hmm. I think we're in a good so position reason, to go forward. To you're reasonably confident that the second round is going to be under the 75. It yeah. should. It should be. And if it's not, well, who, who loses out? The at, town at, that, at that point, I think we may have to revisit with him that he, he really owed us two fees for the first two host community agreements and that he could just pay the difference or give us the whole thing and we'll hand him $6,000 back if he really wants the accounting to, to get okay. handled that way. So, but I think we, I think we, right now we roll forward because unlike agriculture and manufacturing, there's a lot more like pre-existing examples of the templates so for we, retail. Yeah. I mean, that's, well, and I it's think, in so many communities. It's in yeah, so many and do you have experience? Uh, yes. Do you guys have, did you have retail in Belchertown? We had uh, retail, we did not have cultivation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most communities do. We actually had five HCAs, only one came to fruition. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully between your experience and your experience. Yeah. <laughs> I have experience on getting that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but so so and you understand what I'm saying, Lori, is rather than going through the whole hijinks of telling them, hey, submit your second fee for the manufacturing, mm -hmm. I'm thinking we just we drive on with the retail with the target of take advantage of there's so much more a body of work around the retail agreements and then see where we land with the expenses sure. so all right we good yeah. uh professional development holly oh you miss grant right here Keep i'm really trying to get through i know tonight. you're trying to get through the agenda <laughs> I, and I respect that. I, 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 I wholeheartedly going support too that approach, right? Uh, yeah. yes, grant so writer. Yeah. I think I was taking the lead on it. Um, so I had talked to Ron and Lindsay. Do we want to hire a grant writer or do we want to finagle a hybrid between Ron and Lindsay? And just for a little bit more background information for us, we, we actually talked to uh, uh, to Lindsay with regards to, I guess, the bandwidth and whether or not uh, doing her highway part-time plus the grant writer position, would that be too much for her? And she indicated no, she didn't think it was. I did touch base with uh, Pete as well, and he was kind of on board because one of the things that Lindsay had mentioned was a hybrid position where, in essence, it's not necessarily I'm working, you know, 24 hours in highway and then you know, another 16 just as a grant writer. It's almost kind of putting a bucket of 40 hours or however many hours we, we determine. And we let her decide if it's heavy duty time for, for grants, there's some um, reporting there that is due imminently. Uh, there's an application a deadline that's approaching. She can focus more on grant writing, uh, obviously with working with her supervisor and vice versa if highway finds their hurting then she she has that flexibility. so That's so, one so is there enough wiggle room in the current highway administrator did we mention grants in the highway administrator job description the reason why i'm asking that question is a couple of different things we need to talk no, about i think here. we need to adjust mm -hmm. her job description in general so the well, highway administrator admin has always had grants in it because the highway admin has right. always been responsible mm -hmm. for completing all highway grants. Right. The grant writer has never done those. Right. And that's back to, I think, I said. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So, well, and the reason, but the reason why I'm asking is, but there's a different pay rate between the yes. highway and the and the grant writing role. Yes. Which so, we have been paying her right. this whole time at two separate rates. Okay, and that's fine, because we have a lot of people in this town on two separate rates for two separate jobs. She's not the only one, or at least she, historically there were there was people. Historically there were, but when we did the pay, um, the pay reclassification in fiscal year 21, we actually got the people who are doing multiple jobs are actually making the, the same, same across the board now. <laughs> it makes life a little bit easier. It, it mm -hmm. does. Yes. So. Um, but so are we looking to basically maintain kind of like dual rates and she would just basically charge the hours to whatever she's... No, we had a little discussion with our, our town accountant and I think we're leaning for you, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, um, instead of coming up with the, the dual rates blending and coming up with a trying to find rate. out what that flat rate would be uh, based upon the calculation of her uh, hours as a grant writer and the pay rate hours as a uh, highway uh, assistant have the, wh whatever the, the math works out to be with that if we blended those two and just have and just have her hold both positions at okay. that blended rate exactly and I mean yes there's a certain amount of trust that we have to place with Lindsay that she's going to be able to, to manage both of those and as well as the priorities but I mean from I mean my own personal I yes I just recently started, but also from the impression I get from everyone that worked with Lindsay, they have the utmost confidence that she'd be able to handle that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't have any concerns. I have none. I, I know how diligent she is and what a hard worker, so I agree with blending the two positions and just increasing her hours with what are necessary to, to get the grants done. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll... So going into fiscal year 20, Right, we, we're just harmonizing her pay exactly. and having her split her time across the two yeah. roles, and that way we don't have to mess with the fact that if we don't have a position defined, then it's a exactly. whole goat rodeo to, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Just do a standard one pay rate. One pay rate across the two positions yeah. for now because it's held by the same person. and right. which is how we do everybody else. else. Yeah. So there's precedent. Yes. Okay. I'm good. So I'll make a motion that we um, uh, appoint um, Lindsay Rockwell as our um, grant writer. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yeah, but, but how many hours a week are we anticipating this is going to be for the grant writer? Uh, my guess would be 10 to, it'll be between 10 and 15. Yeah, would because be the next guess. thing that comes to mind is if she gets over the 20 hour. She already is. 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 Yeah. Okay. It has no impact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I made it so much cleaner. She was benefiting yes. part time. Okay. Yeah. How many hours does she work? Twenty-four. Uh, I thought we twenty-eight. Moved her we up. upped her up to yes, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. It was originally twenty-four. We upped it to twenty-eight. But we moved her up because of just flux yeah. going on. Yeah, so. yeah, because the highway super was like the interim and. Yeah, yeah. it was right. set for a twenty-four hour a week position originally. Yeah. So then. Up it to twenty-eight. So the budget had some flex. Yeah. Because the pay was originally set for Cindy, right. okay. um, it was never really reset for Lindsay. And then how many hours a week are we anticipating for grant writing? I'd say probably 10 to 15. Yeah, because so. Kathy was working 15. Yeah. So, so. I think that'll get a hold of the, over the 40 if she's at 20. So well, we'll I, keep it I, yeah, I, but well, there won't be so any overtime because they're two different positions. They're two different, they're two different okay. positions. And then the other piece of it is, um, like, the grant writer time has always had a certain amount of flex in it like okay. there's busy times and I think that's part of what you and Lindsay discussed right yes. is like highway seasonally has some very busy times grant writing seasonally has some busy okay. times they're not necessarily yeah. like overlapping busy times sure. so we work guys do. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Her regular hours would come out of. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, okay. so there's a lot okay. of 
places okay. where it doesn't hurt anybody and only helps. So, so Justin determined that blended rate, can we use 28 hours of highway pay, 12 hours of grant writer pay to come up with that blended 40 hour? I would week? probably go more like 2614 because I think her original highway hours I think her original highway hours. I thought it was 24. Yeah, well, I'm saying about half the oh. time. Right, if that puts her halfway between. Mm -hmm. Or you could just go with the 15 hours for the grant writing and, and tw 25, because, I mean, that's what the position was previously. I'd use somewhere, mm -hmm. I'd either use 14 or 15 for the grant writer. Well, wasn't it 25 was the original higher rate of the grant writer? No, I would think it's probably more than that. I think it's, I don't even know what the original higher rate was. I'd have to go back to Kathy Fisher for so long. Has it been that long? <laughs> she was here before me. Uh, I've been here was she really? six years. So. The budget is 30 and change per hour for the grant writer. Was it 30 and change? Yeah, because we just pulled it yeah. out. <laughs> okay. It's been a while. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pass so, that so so yeah, so let's let's figure out something that's fair though, okay. right? Because I know I think the original I think Cindy I think um, Kathy's original yeah that's true that I didn't it's realize it was though. seven years ago. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting old. This stuff is Did just going. Did you reduce the highway clerk rate when Cindy left because she had her years of service and everything? Right, right, so we, right. But now Lindsay's caught up. I mean, not really caught up, but I mean she's got what she's got like eight years in that position now. No, I, no, I don't think I, I would say. Five, maybe. Four, maybe. Yeah. Oh, wait, she's on the long deputy sheet, right? She's on the long deputy sheet. Um, she um, didn't qualify. She's got three years. Only three years? Yep. Three yeah, but she's, wow. uh, she's pretty solid yeah, for three longer. years. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. And do you want us to come up with the rate, and do we want to switch it on the next payroll? Do you want us to switch it for July 1st? I mean, but she's also been doing the work and I feel yes. like we've been kind of taking advantage. So, I mean, I would say let's come up with the rate and do it as, as soon as it expeditious. Let's let's be fair about it. Okay. Okay. So, Ron, you can just let me know. Yeah, I'll let you know the, 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 the pay rate for, for, yeah. for the grant writer and the grant writer. Perfect. Yeah. All right. We good? Yep. Professional development, Holly. Okay, so Holly approached me, oh, sure, Lord, now I think it was probably six weeks ago. Um, she used to be our assistant treasurer. Um, I don't know if we're going to take an assistant treasurer approach. I'd like to get an opportunity. I meant to speak with Shannon about it, and I haven't yet, so mm -hmm. I apologize that I didn't do all of my homework before coming, but since it's on the agenda, I just want to put it on everybody's um, radar. Um, she is interested in... Um, pursuing getting back into like treasurer collector training and in a you know position where she's eligible for getting that but not necessarily she's not necessarily looking for you know a role outside of our community yet obviously there's always a risk when you train people that you'll have the potential to lose them flip side is, is it always also gives us the opportunity to have deeper bench strength better backups stuff like that. I know that there was a little bit of a mixed experience, I think, the last time that she was in the assistant treasurer role, but honestly, the the level of, I want to say, churn and chaos we had in our financial platform was, we were in a different place as a town, let's put it that way, right? Is that a fair statement, Lori? We were in a different place, but that, that right. is not the reason right. for the chaos we had on this. Right. So, so what I don't do you know. I'm a firm no. No on what? No on the uh, I'm, I'm a no. Okay. Okay. So do we know how Sharon is Sharon, I've spoken to both Sharon and Brenda and neither of them want an actual assistant. They just want someone who would cover a vacation. Um, and they both said because they're both Sharon is cross trained, Brenda Lynn isn't, but she bonded. Okay. Um, they would cover for each other. Okay. So Sharon is a certified treasurer collector. Brenda is a certified collector because um, they're two separate certifications. 
notifications. Um, but they are both bonded and both can collect each other's money. Okay. Um, so that's really all they were looking for, which is the reason we had such a turnover with an assistant for the collector previously, right? They went through, I think, six people in the last five years because she can't give anyone enough hours, enough to, have hours to keep them around. So she's near workers. Um, and then just closes. Um, Louise Lindsay a couple times. Um, and I know she is bonded as Lindsay well. Lindsay is bonded. Um, and then the same for Sharon. She said she wouldn't have hours to give anyone either because there's really nothing going on. Got it. Um, okay. So they both said the same thing that they just, if someone could collect their money, empty their box, someone that's bonded, that's really it. Well, I don't think it's putting her back in the position. I think it's just training her in the position. Well, the problem is, is so here's here's the catch twenty two. To take okay. the schooling, you to have take to the have schooling, the you have to be oh. in the position. You do. You have to be. You have to be in the position in a town that you're working in. Yeah. So she'd have to be listed as the assistant treasurer or, or the assistant, assistant collector, collector and and be bonded yes. in that role. Just um, whether whether they were getting whether she was getting any hours in the role or not, if she was on paper as that, it would enable her to, to take the, mm. the class. And it's seeming to me, from what I'm seeing, I mean, it's taken Sharon about 25 hours a week to do the job. Yeah. Yeah. It's hmm. interesting. <laughs> What is the cost? Do you have any idea? Um, I'm not positive what theirs is. I know mine is $350. Um, but that's just to attend a school. Um, mine's just in Amherst. They have one in Amherst, and then they have an additional one on the Cape. I see. So I only have to go to Amherst, and I drive back and forth. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. so what does it take to get bonded? Out of paper, they do a quick research on you and pay the fee. Okay. Um, yeah, so. And we don't have to decide anything tonight. I just wanted to put it on everybody's radar. Okay. So. Well, I was kind of bored. I mean, my only thing is I don't know how needed it is because, again, we haven't really sat down and talked with Sharon. Right. I, I don't know how needed it is today. Right. Right. Um, there's not a, there's, 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 there, there's yeah. not a lot of you know there's not a lot of bench strength statewide when it comes to those type of positions. So um, I know there was issues in the past where they're in the assistant treasurer position because of the fact that she was also collecting for the water department, and that was an issue on a man, couple of audits yes. management letters, right? I think there's ways around that, though, so long as they're they're not turning over to themselves, then. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, that was one of that was the biggest issue, which is the reason right. we finally decided. But there were also the other issues that um, myself and my firm had brought to the board of selectmen, as well as to um, CMRPC. Um, you know, but it's, it's one of those things, it, you know, it, something to consider, right, is that, you know, the, the, the cost is fairly trivial from a standpoint of bonding cost, and I know it's not cheap, but $350, $400 is also not a break the bank from a standpoint of if we're, if we're looking at doing training and developing individuals, so, um, you know, just putting it on the table, so. Just something else to keep in mind, though, if you put her name as an assistant treasurer, it's going to go back into our audit okay. as she is now back in the treasurer's office. Okay. So that... So we'll even if we have controls yeah. in place, it, it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Really? She works in two departments that turn over money, and she has the possibility 
possibility of touching money. Yeah. So, okay. and we have to so really, we, we really can't do you it. You can't, not in the treasurer's office. And if you want to attempt to do this in the collector's office, then that would, it would potentially be okay. So it would, be a conversa it would be a conversation with Brenda. Yes, because she's collector. Yep. Um, but yeah, and we have to keep in mind that we can't do anything that would get us written up in our audit because we're under bond now. So yeah. No, exactly. We can't. Well, right. No, so. no right. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. yeah, I thought we could. I thought we could no. through policies or controls be no, be okay. No, realistically, the assistant has the same authority as the treasurer mm -hmm. once they're bonded. They can touch anything in the office. Got it. Um, yeah. So that would limit it to just if Brenda was willing on the collector side. Yeah. But somebody who's in the collector role can take both collector and treasurer courses. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure because it's in, in some places it's the same role. In some places it is. Um, okay. They may let her sign up for both. Right. It depends. Okay. I've not tried that. I've taken the treasurer's office instead. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. All right. We're good. All right. We'd be death to death. Thank uh, you. <laughs> insurance renewal. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we are in possession of our property casualty renewal. It was actually sent uh, over a month ago to, uh, to Kelly. And uh, obviously, it's still outstanding at this point. Uh, in the discussion I had with our new buyer reps on the property casualty side, um, I did note that there is a 10% increase in the premium over last year. The premium is now $137,000. 10% increase. When I questioned our representative what was behind the increase, he indicated one, there is uh, inflationary um, pressures within the industry itself. And he said the, the, really the overriding factor was the fact that evidently a couple of years ago there was a significant water damage in town hall. And, uh, no, I know the library. Library. Yeah. He, he had mentioned fire department in town hall. Yeah, fire department. Was it like fire Stamps and fire department was too. Yeah, but in the library. The library. Yeah, he, he said it was from from what he could see, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. And the bad news is they didn't perform the five year work back when I signed the So is. so I do have one issue though, and that I do want you to push back a little bit on the Mia rep. That library water incident, the second one, was because the contractors did a crap job the first time, and the contractors were managed, selected, and approved by the insurance company. Yeah, and I would hope that's not being held against us. So, so we need to make sure that that claim is not being held against us, because that was FUBAR because of inadequate work done by the contractor that did it from the first water incident. Hmm. That's interesting. Did we also have a claim for the roof though too? The, for the one that's oh, the, battle? Yeah. We right. did. We did yeah, have that. I think we, that's, that's probably the town hall thing you're seeing. Yeah. That yeah. was only like two years ago. Yeah, but it also wasn't a really big No, but I, I don't know if we hit insurance for that. I think we decided to self insure that. I think that. we might have actually just paid that one. Because it was only ten I grand. Can't remember, because it wasn't very much. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think it was, it was roughly ten a, grand because right. we had some bricks I know hit we the. Did insurance for the fire station. Yeah, but that would be less than insurance on the house. Yeah, that one we just did because we had the money. We had the money, at, I think, in a town hall improvement. I think we spent it out of there. So. Okay, I, I could certainly ask for. Yeah, a rest yeah. J just at least, at least get a breakdown of that because if they're if they're holding that second library claim against us we need to at least push back on them. I don't know that it will change their number, but I want them on notice that that's crap. I, I enjoy picking people who shits. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I agree. I mean, I, I'm not so sure if I jump up and down and hold my breath, it's going to change. It, it may change move. nothing, but you know what? If we get 2% of that 10% back because they realize that they're double hitting us for something that was actually their responsibility, I think it would who must at least ask the question. And, and of note that if, if we do pay by uh, August 1st, I believe, we do get a 2.5% discount. Reduction. Discount. Do yeah. we have, oh, we do get it? 
we always do. Yeah. yeah. Good. You know, that, and the that and the retirement yeah. is paid like cut the first check yes. of the year. <laughs> Take all the discounts. Okay, so I will hold this off to the June twentieth meeting pending my my thrashing of the the library. Oh, is that one where we just need to vote one of us having? having yeah, why don't we do that? Do we yeah, want to? Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to? Okay, I'll make a motion to authorize the chair to sign the the Mia insurance for the Second. property and casualty. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, now make we can a motion go quick. to appoint uh, <laughs> Emma went to the cultural council. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, make a motion to appoint. The, the only thing is, yeah. I, typically, don't the people come before us that we, you know, I'm good with the cultural council, but as far as the the next one, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have interrupted them. Yeah. They don't always come before us. Now they, they have the option. They're always, I always say that uh, they're not required to come, but they're, they're welcome, to, they're invited to come, and then usually they decide with whoever. We usually look their them. committees. There's always a recommendation, though. Okay. I always make sure that I get that they recommendation. Sure. And the yeah. reason that the third one doesn't have a recommendation, which is Sarah, is because I recommended her, so I just didn't put anything on and we all know her. So. Um. I interrupted you on the yeah. conservation okay. commission about that. So, Did you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion for Emily uh, Genoway to uh, be appointed to the uh, conservation commission. Second. Um, any discussion? I'd like her to come before the board just to, I'd like to meet her and I'd well, like to I, see I, her. I'd rather make a motion that we authorize Rich to reach out to her individually. I don't think we have to call her necessarily yeah, no, in. Because right. so, I could really, I okay. really don't care. <laughs> well, I think it's important. I mean, the conservation yeah. plays a big role. I mean, I would like to know. But I believe they get interviewed and selected through the committees that they come But I've from. also seen some of the other uh, suggestions that came through that should and, and then got pulled before it got here because of some of the research that was done. Be, but I, I think that's such an important role in the town. Like yeah, but I'm not going to I'm not going to demand that they come before the full select board because people have their own schedule challenges. I'd rather have If they can't board. meet us here one night, how are they going to meet the commitment of the board? That's my position. Well, I you think you guys can outvote me, but that, that's what I'd like to see. Well, I would think that if that committee go, meets on a Tuesday and they're good with that Tuesday, but they have something on Thursday when we have meetings. I can see how they yeah, do conflict. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm not good every night of the week equally, right? right. I might be willing to commit to something on, on one night that I'm not willing to commit on the other. So, um, I, I, you know, and I think, so, I think and I think, and I think, I think Thursday, using, and I, and I think using the language like "come before us" makes it sound like they're coming to the principal's <laughs> office, and that I somehow like we've got meet, some meet someone that's volunteering for our community. That's well, all. well, that's that's a that's a very yeah. different tone than saying yeah. that yeah. they need to come before us. Well, so I think <laughs> well, it's, it's fine not, to. I'm not going to, you know, right, say anything inappropriate. Like I just would like to meet person coming and okay. I had some questions and okay. regarding the position. So, so so why don't we when's our next like so defer this off to so so I, I understand Rich's point although I'm willing to vote it tonight so um, you know so so Brad I, I'm, I'm fine with voting it it'd be different if it was like there was no one on the committee right and we we're setting up a committee. Yeah. So and 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 yeah. So you know what? I, I'm going to make the motion that that we just that we appoint Emily Genoway tonight and and still issue her an invite just so we can get to know her at our next scheduled meeting. Did you look at her resume? Is that what you were looking at? I, I did see the resume. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw the resume. That's why I'm yeah. totally comfortable. Okay. Um. Did I second it already? I don't think you did. Okay, second. Uh, all in favor? Coughlin, aye. Is it a roll call vote? I'm uh, <laughs> aye. Aye. <laughs> and I'm, I would like to, I'm, I'm not going to vote now. Okay. One abstention. Mr. Chandler, may I come forward in a minute?
Is it pertaining something on the agenda? No, it's open meeting law violations. Well, can we hold that to the end? And I'm gonna give it to you why the meeting's in operation. So it's a matter of record. Because of the way this, the way the credibility. But this doesn't need to be done during the meeting. That's good. You just got it right now. Thank you. Just a second, Trot. Is in this is another open meeting violation. I'm tired of being violated in the town of Brookfield. So this can really... Thank you. Thank you. We're up to cable advisory. Yeah, cable advisory appointment. I'll make a motion to appoint Sarah Campbell to the cable advisory committee. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, there's a year end transfer that we have from Lori. Operator wages to clerk wages and account expense to select board expense. Do you guys have copies of this? I do. Yeah, I'm yeah. oh. yeah, good. Just some final bookkeeping for the year end. Yeah. Do we need a motion for this? Yes. Yep. So I'll, I'll make them. A... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Doctor. Go. go for it. No. I'll make a motion that we uh, transfer $475. <clears throat> Of the accounts expense, ex expense is it to pay? Oh, here it is. is it to pay the postcard printing postage. Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. I'll make a motion that we approve three thousand two hundred and four dollars and fifty one cents of the operating wages uh, to the clerk's wages. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, acknowledge council, cultural council minutes. Make a motion to acknowledge the cultural council minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. And select board minutes. And a motion to approve the select board minutes um, for uh, 4 11 24 and 5 15 24. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Issues not reasonably anticipated by the chair. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. I had 8 30. <laughs> <laughs> that was a goal. Sorry, we've got a little over long winded. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. Lori, thank you very much for coming in.